welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the fifth and final video in IB Biology Topic 2, Molecular Biology, where we will be looking at respiration and photosynthesis. All living cells carry out the process of respiration. It can be defined as the process by which a cell releases energy in the form of ATP from its organic compounds. There are two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs with oxygen and anaerobic respiration occurs without oxygen. For aerobic respiration, the word equation is glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide plus water. The symbol equation for this reaction is thus C6H12O6 plus 6O2 goes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O. It is important to note that aerobic respiration produces lots of ATP, but this is not shown in these equations. For anaerobic respiration, the process is different in humans compared to yeast. In humans, the word equation is glucose goes to lactate plus carbon dioxide. In yeast, the word equation is glucose goes to ethanol plus carbon dioxide. In either reaction, very little ATP is produced. You do not need to know the symbol equations for anaerobic respiration for your exam. Quite commonly in the IB Biology exam, you can be expected to compare and contrast the process of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So, aerobic respiration requires oxygen, whereas anaerobic respiration does not. Aerobic respiration produces lots of ATP, whereas anaerobic respiration produces very little. Aerobic respiration generates water, whereas anaerobic does not. Aerobic respiration does not produce lactate, whereas anaerobic in humans does. Aerobic respiration does not produce ethanol, whereas anaerobic in yeast does. Both aerobic and anaerobic respiration produce carbon dioxide, and both aerobic and anaerobic respiration produce ATP. So, you now understand that aerobic and anaerobic respiration can occur in different organisms. But why is this useful? Well, humans primarily depend on aerobic respiration to generate energy. However, sometimes anaerobic respiration is used when oxygen is insufficient. For example, intense exercise, such as sprinting or weightlifting, results in a buildup of lactate in muscle, limiting the amount of anaerobic respiration we can do, as this lactate forms lactic acid, inducing pain. Yeast is a unicellular fungus used to make bread and alcohol. To make bread, the yeast is warmed with sugar and covered to promote anaerobic respiration. This produces CO2, which causes gas bubbles in the dough and the stereotypical rise, and ethanol, which evaporates in the oven. To make alcohol, yeast is mixed in anaerobic conditions with sugar at lower temperatures. This produces CO2 which bubbles out, and ethanol. This ethanol is used in alcohols or purified and dehydrated to form bioethanol for cars. But how can you really measure this respiration? Well, this is the role of a respirometer. This apparatus consists of a sealed container containing an organism, an alkali to absorb the excess carbon dioxide and prevent suffocation, a capillary tube containing fluid attached to the container, and a water bath to maintain a constant temperature throughout the experiment. To observe respiration, the organism is left for a period of time, and if the organism respires, the water in the capillary tube will move towards the container as the oxygen within the container is consumed. As you can imagine, containing an organism in a closed container has ethical considerations. There are three main concerns to be aware of, which are if the animal can be removed from and returned safely to its habitat without extreme stress, if the animal would suffer, and if this suffering can be minimised. 
if an alternative experiment exists without the need to use an animal. You now know everything you need to know about respiration. However, some organisms can also carry out the important process of photosynthesis, so let's explore that too. Photosynthesis is carried out by all autotrophs. However, the IB syllabus focuses only on plants within this group. Photosynthesis can be defined as the process by which a cell uses light, CO2 and water to generate organic compounds and oxygen. Like with respiration, you are expected to know the word and symbol equations for photosynthesis. The word equation is carbon dioxide plus water goes to glucose plus oxygen. The symbol equation is 6CO2 plus 6H2O goes to C6H12O6 plus 6O2. You may notice this is exactly the opposite of respiration. But what occurs during the process of photosynthesis? As a summary, light energy is absorbed by a photosynthetic pigment called chlorophyll. This results in the splitting of water to produce high energy electrons and oxygen, known as photolysis. The electrons are then used to convert carbon dioxide into organic compounds, such as glucose. The IB also expects you to describe further detail about the photosynthetic pigment known as chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment found within chloroplasts. It absorbs red light from 450 to 500 nanometers, and blue light from 650 to 700 nanometers. However, it reflects green light between 500 and 650 nanometers, hence why it appears green. One can quantify the absorbance of chlorophyll, as described here, using two different types of graphs, known as action spectra and absorption spectra. Let's take a look at these. Action spectra show the rate of photosynthesis at each wavelength of light. Absorption spectra show the percentage of light absorbed at each wavelength of light. Understandably, these two graphs mirror one another. In addition, when looking at these graphs, it can be seen clearly that the absorption and rate of photosynthesis vary at different wavelengths of light. Therefore, colour of light is a key factor that affects the rate of photosynthesis. However, the IB syllabus focuses on three more important factors on the rate of photosynthesis. These are temperature, light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration. As temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a maximum point known as the optimum temperature. After this, as temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis decreases as the enzymes become denatured. As light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a maximum rate. After this point, any further increase does not affect the rate, as one of the other two factors becomes limiting. As carbon dioxide concentration increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a maximum rate. After this, any further increase does not affect the rate, as one of the other two factors becomes limiting. Quite commonly, the exam explores these factors in the context of Elodea, an aquatic plant. Elodea is placed beneath a funnel connected to an upturned measuring cylinder. In this way, the volume of oxygen, or number of bubbles produced, can be recorded over time. It is important to note that the water is boiled to remove CO2 before a set mass of sodium carbonate is added to keep the concentration of CO2 constant. Then, one can either change the light intensity, temperature or mass of sodium carbonate to investigate how each of the three factors previously discussed affect the rate of photosynthesis. Now that you understand the process and impacts on photosynthesis, it is important to consider how the individual pigments present within chlorophyll and how they can be separated by thin layer chromatography you should be comfortable explaining the following process in detail. First, grind a leaf with propanone in a pestle and mortar to produce a green solution. 
Allow the propanone to evaporate before re-adding a few drops to create a green paste. Repeatedly transfer drops of this green paste to the TLC strip, allowing time to dry between each drop to create a dot. Draw a pencil line at the top of this dot and place the strip into a running solvent just below the pencil line. Keep the strip here until the running solvent reaches just the top of the strip. At this point, mark the location of the running solvent and each pigment before measuring the distance travelled from the original start point. You can then calculate the RF values using the formula RF equals distance moved by pigment divided by distance moved by solvent. So, photosynthesis occurs in chlorophyll pigments of many living organisms. But when did this all begin? And what was the effect on Earth? The IB expects you to explain such ideas. Let's look at it. The first organisms to photosynthesize were prokaryotes about 3,500 million years ago, followed by algae and plants about 2,200 million years ago. This raised atmospheric oxygen from 0 to 2%, known as the Great Oxidation Event. This coincided with the first glaciation, presumably since an increase in oxygen decreased carbon dioxide concentration, reducing global temperatures. As a result, there was a mass oxidation of dissolved iron in the water, which created the banded iron rock formations that we see today. However, it wasn't until the development of multicellular organisms until atmospheric oxygen rose to 20%, as we see today. You now know everything you need to know about respiration and photosynthesis. For those students studying IB biology at higher level, these processes are explored in much greater detail in topic 8 of the IB biology syllabus. We hope you enjoy the fifth and final video in our IB biology topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.